From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our snowy statewide forecast. Plus, we hear from the family of the missing Bozeman woman found brutally murdered. But first, our top story. A new development this noon in the case of a Helena area rural fire chief accused of assaulting police during the January 6, 2021 riot at the U.S. Capitol. MTN's John Riley reports. West Valley Fire Rescue has confirmed to MTN that Frank Dahlquist has resigned as chief effective immediately. According to court documents, Dahlquist is accused of pepper spraying and assaulting police at the Capitol riot. West Valley Fire Rescue says services will not be impacted by his departure and existing leadership is assuming additional command responsibilities at this time. On Tuesday, a federal magistrate judge in Great Falls ordered Dahlquist released to home detention while his case is being transferred to the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. In 2021, Dahlquist lived and worked as a firefighter in Monroe, Washington. He took over as West Valley's fire chief in November 2022. Investigators submitted pictures and video they say show Dahlquist with his face covered, allegedly spraying an orange colored chemical agent directly into the face of a police officer. Prosecutors also allege he was captured on a body worn camera, allegedly assaulting another police officer. Dahlquist is expected to appear before a federal judge in D.C. remotely on Thursday, January 18th. In Helena, John Riley, MTN News. The family of Megan Stedman, the woman missing in Bozeman and found dead in Idaho Falls last week, says she worked to provide the best for her two kids. Today, our Edgar Sidio had a chance to learn more about Megan from her grieving family. Brave, independent, and a fighter. That's how Megan Stedman's brother Aiden Mitmo describes his sister. The 34-year-old woman from Spokane had been working in Livingston at a gas station when she disappeared on December 15th. Her body was discovered in a camper in Idaho Falls on January 12th. According to court documents, 42-year-old Chris Foyles told police he stabbed Megan multiple times. I spoke with Bozeman Police Detective Captain Dana McNeil, who says the department had received dozens of tips from the public between the day Megan disappeared in December and into January. We had some serious concerns from the start and that the family, mostly because the family had some serious concerns and, uh, you know, we took it very seriously and it's, it's sad. It's really sad to see this happen. It McNeil also says that Bozeman Police aren't ruling out pressing charges in Montana. Obviously, there'll be charges out in uh, Idaho. Um, it doesn't mean that there won't be charges here as well. Foyles also faces charges in Park County, including partner family member assault in which Megan was a victim. Foyles was released from jail shortly before Megan vanished. M. Chan learned that his bond was set at just $5,000. During a text conversation, Megan's brother tells me that she was entrepreneurial, saying Megan told him she wanted to open up her own nail salon. Bitma says that Megan went to cosmetology school and wanted to use her skills to help other people look good and feel good after recovering from surgery. Megan's brother and her family describe her as a ray of light that filled any room she was in. Megan leaves behind two children and a GoFundMe is set up. You can find that link on our website. In Bozeman, Edgar Cidio, MTN News. Now we go to Lodgegrass, where search parties found the body of 37-year-old Shan Nomi. He went missing on Saturday, one of the coldest nights of the year, hitchhiking along Highway 87. The search for Nomi lasted for days. Crews finally finding his body early Wednesday morning just east of Lodgegrass. An explosion at a home in Missoula Wednesday afternoon caused a major house fire and a city block to be shut down. The Missoula Fire Department was called to a house in the 1400 block of South 4th Street West around 1 p.m. yesterday after a large boom was heard. The people in the home were able to get out safely before the home quickly became engulfed. Northwestern Energy was called to the scene to shut off gas in the area while the fire department called in four off-duty crews and one battalion to assist. Missoula Rural Fire District was also called in for support. He had smelled some gas coming in a couple hours before it happened. The fire department came out, checked our house and said you're good to go. Went back to business as usual and then heard an extremely loud explosion. Grabbed my infant, got the dogs out and then ran out the front door and saw the carnage. When got out safe. 
Pierce Brosnan has pleaded not guilty to trespassing near Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park. The incident reportedly happened November 1st, 2023. The first citation claims Brosnan violated rules regarding foot travel in all thermal areas and within Yellowstone Canyon confined to trails. The second claims he violated closures and use limits in the park. Brosnan had been ordered to appear in U.S. District Court in Wyoming next week. Instead, he was able to plead not guilty. The in-person hearing was vacated. Brosnan's next hearing is set for February 20th via teleconference. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. Ooh, big story for us, that cold Arctic blast coming in to bring those temperatures down for the next couple of days. We'll have a look at our forecast coming up, but what's going on across the U.S.? Well, your headlines, there's that. Another Arctic blast expected late this week. We're already starting to feel the effects of that along the high line. Right now, double digits below zero with the actual temperature. Very, very cold. Northwest, the Rockies, heavy mountain snow. Uh, we've got bands of heavy lake effect snow continuing around the Great Lakes and in the Midwest and Mid-Atlantic by tomorrow, hazardous snow will start to move in. For us, that cold front's made its way through. Very cold today, that blast of Arctic air coming in, but it doesn't last. Rebounding and warming up across the weekend and beyond. We'll take a look with the main forecast coming up. The future of the Northwestern Energy gas plant, once again front and center in Laurel. It is in regards to a proposal looking to amend the city's five-year growth policy, which would have a major impact on the plant. MTN's David J. reports. Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. The Laurel City County Planning Board voted to table the growth management policy update. We do not have minutes, nor do we have the input from the county commissioners or the county attorneys. And because the growth policy is needed to work on zoning issues, the board also tabled the county's request to consider zoning regulations around Laurel in the planning jurisdiction. It was uh, discussed with the county attorney that we cannot move forward with any kind of zoning regulations until the growth policy has been settled. Those opposed to Northwestern's natural gas plant say they're concerned about the city giving up its zoning jurisdiction and a change from agricultural to heavy industrial zoning. This isn't the zoning change per se, but it sets the stage for that. It's the first step. And so as soon as you see that show up on plans, you need clarification. You need to object to this potential use. I would want to rest assured to you as a resident out there, there's nothing that this planning board or the county commissioners or the city council is trying to do and change zoning at this time. And Northwestern Energy put out a statement before the meeting Required permits were secured and regulations were met before construction on the Yellowstone County Generating Station began in the fall of 2021. Projects are designed in the best interests of our customers and the communities we serve. Before making a decision, the board will hear more from the public in an open workshop on January 31st.